In this CSS Level 3 tutorial, we'll be going over the various parameters for creating linear gradient backgrounds for any HTML elements. This video will be followed by a radial gradient programming tutorial, so don't miss the next one if you enjoyed this one. Okay, let's start with the bare bones of an HTML5 web document. Mine is named test.html. Go up into the head and put in a style element, and I'll make its type text CSS. Make sure I go down a couple of lines and close that style element. Now the first thing I want to do is target all native div tags that I put on this page. So just for example's sake, we're going to have a whole lot of divs on this page. And we're going to have different gradients on all of them so we can evaluate the way they look next to one another. So what we're going to do just for example's sake is just, so in CSS we just put div. If you wanted to target all paragraphs, so you would just put P there. But we want to target div, so we'll put div. And each one we want to float left, be a width of 300, a height of 100, have a margin of 4 pixels around them. The color of the text within them will be white. The font size of the text will be 30 pixels. And the padding, the inner padding of each div will be 20 pixels. Simple enough. Now I want you to go into the body element of your web page and place in these 9 div elements. And each one is going to have a different class from the other. You can also make these IDs if you want, but I'm just going to use class. So you can see each one has a different class, gradient 1, all the way down through gradient 9. And the inner HTML content just holds the number for which div that is on the page. Now we can start targeting all these divs by the class we give them. So let's target gradient 1. We'll say div dot to signify that it's a class, gradient 1. Open curly brace and close curly brace. And we want to target the background property. We'll type in linear hyphen gradient. And then you open and close parentheses and then put semicolon. And in between your parentheses is where we put all the parameters that will render the exact gradient that we want. Now in a couple of years, we'll be able to use linear gradient without any prefixes. But for the time being, since I'm testing in Google Chrome, or if you're testing in Safari, you have to put the WebKit prefix before your linear gradient setting. And if you're testing in Internet Explorer, this would be MS. If you're testing in Firefox, this would be MOS. And if you're testing in Opera, this would be an O. Now, since I'm testing in Chrome, I'm going to use WebKit. But like I said, soon, in the very near future, we'll be able to use it in all browsers without any of the prefixes, just like that. But for the time being, when we get done with all of these examples, we're going to add WebKit, MOS, O, and the MS prefixes for all of the gradients that we create in these examples. Because we want to make sure that it works if a user comes to our site in Opera. We want to make sure that the linear gradient works for them too. So basically the parameters you can put in a linear gradient are the angle, which is the direction it will flow, and then all of the colors that you want, and color stops, which I'll be explaining color stops and the colors in just a moment. So the first thing we'll do is we'll just put a very simple gradient that will go from turquoise to black. Now let's render test.html in our favorite browser. So you see I get a gradient that goes from turquoise to black. Now you can use any kind of color values that you want. You don't have to use the direct name of colors like I'm using here. You can use hexadecimal colors if you like. So I can change that word black to a hexadecimal black. And then if I test, you'll see I get the same results. You can also use HSL colors and RGB color values here. So you can use direct name of colors, you can use hexadecimal colors, you can use HSL colors, or you can use RGB colors, whatever you prefer. Okay, now what if I want to add more colors? Let's copy this whole rule right here, and let's create another rule under that one for the gradient box number two. And right after the black setting, we're going to add another color, magenta. Now let's view that in our browser. So you can see now we have a gradient that has three colors. And let's say I wanted to add yellow onto the end of that, preview it. So you can see how you can just get a whole wide spectrum of colors. All you have to do is keep adding them in there, separated by commas. Okay, now let's take that one that we just created that has three colors in it now. Let's change that to gradient three so we can affect box three here on the page. Now we're going to introduce color stops which will make your color stop where you specify and you can use either pixels or percentages so if I say turquoise goes 30 percent and I'll leave the black alone and then my magenta I want it to go 70 percent so let's render that let me stretch this out a little bit 
And what you can see is that that makes the turquoise and the magenta dominate more of the background. And you can go even so far as to tighten those lines up all the way to where it doesn't even look like a gradient. And I'll show you what I'm talking about by making another rule here. Let's make this one gradient 4. Now here if I target black and I make it 30%, what will happen is it will meet up with this line where turquoise stops at 30% and make a sharp line. So let's take a look at that. So you see on number 4 we have a very sharp line. There's no graduation of one color to the next. It's just a really sharp line. We can do the same where the black meets the magenta. And all you'd have to do to make that happen is put another black here and make it meet the 70% comma and then view that. So that shows you how to put these lines, the gradient lines, anywhere you want them and even tighten them up to where they don't even look like they graduate from one color to the other. Okay, now let's talk about direction or angle of your linear gradient. So let's highlight this rule for gradient 4. Let's make one right under it called gradient 5. And let's just simplify this down to turquoise, comma, black, comma, magenta. And if we render that, we can see we have a new box that looks just like box 2. But now what we're going to do is, in front of all of our colors, if you want to ever change the angle of your gradients, in front of all of your colors, the first parameter, you can put something like left. Press Control S and Preview. So now you can see that your gradient is coming from the left. The turquoise starts on the left, then black, then you have magenta on the right of your area. And I can also target bottom if I want. You can target bottom, left, right, or top. If I render that, you can see now my gradient comes from the bottom, or begins from the bottom, up. Alright, so let's grab all of that and copy it. Make another one, call it gradient 6. Now here we'll talk about 45 degree angles. So if I wanted my gradient to start at the bottom left corner, I can just put bottom left. I can use bottom left, bottom right, top left, or top right. So let's render this in box 6. So you can see box 6 has a slight angle to it. The turquoise starts in this bottom corner and the gradient ends with the magenta in this top corner here. And you can see that more dramatically if you make these boxes square and then re-render and then refresh. You can see how more dramatically you can see how it's from corner to corner there. But I'll just leave that at 300 so we can all see what they look like in rectangular form. Now you're not only limited to bottom left or top right if you wanted certain angles for your linear. You can get the exact angle that you want by using a different approach for setting the angle. So let's make this gradient 7 and let's change bottom left to whatever angle that you want. If I say 45 DEG. That's 45 degrees. Render that in my browser. But what if I change 45 to something like 315? And refresh the page and keep an eye on box 7. You can see how the angle changes, and you can put any angle that you want there. So if I want an angle of 20 here, that's no problem. Refresh the page and keep an eye on box 7. See, you get any angle that you like. And I can go back to 45, and you'll see it turn ever so slightly. If I refresh, see, it just turned ever so slightly. Because I'm changing the angle more directly using numbers. Now it's important to note right here, since we have a numeric value, that JavaScript can animate any numeric values in CSS. So if you have something on the page and it has a numeric value like this one does, JavaScript can animate that in a smooth sort of way by incrementing or decrementing these numbers. So I just want to let some of you guys know that if you happen to be thinking about making JavaScript rotate and animate this gradient, spin it round and round, you can just target these degrees right here. And if you're slick enough, you can make JavaScript animate that round and round to spin the gradient. And that might be something handy if you're making like uh, multimedia players, like an MP3 player in JavaScript and HTML. You can have animated gradient effects on it. And if you're really good, you'll be able to use the HTML5 audio sound spectrum to affect graphics on the page. And that's how visualizations are created for sound.
that jump to the exact beat. Okay, we just have two more examples to go through. So let's copy 7, and let's create a number 8. And let's take the angle of the direction off of this one. So we have a gradient with turquoise, black, and magenta. That's a linear gradient. But right in front of linear, we're going to add the word repeating, and then a hyphen. So you have repeating linear gradient instead of just a normal linear gradient. Now you're going to create a repeating linear gradient. And you have to use color stops to affect the repeating linear gradient. So if I render this out, you can see box 8, it doesn't have a repeating gradient because I don't have any color stops in it yet. So I'm going to go into the black color and I'll stop it at 20 pixels. And then the magenta, I'm going to stop at 40 pixels. Now let's render this. You can see that gives you a repeating gradient background. Now let's take that one and we'll just pop the last example in here. Make this one gradient 9. And let's change the angle to top right. Or you can use degrees if you want. And then render the page. And that just shows you how you can set your repeating gradients at any angle that you want. So you can use the gradients as navigation, bar, background colors. And it'll give a little bit of depth and 3D feeling to your graphics. You can use these gradients on A elements for buttons or LI elements. Maybe you're using LI or A elements for buttons. Gradients can be the backgrounds for those to give them a little more depth and make them look a little more like a button. And you can also change their appearance on rollover. When you're using something like a link, you can just put a hover pseudo selector on it and change the gradient completely when the user's mouse goes over it. For instance, here, let me show you what I'm talking about. I'll just take gradient number one, press control C, put a hover pseudo selector right here. We're going to change that from turquoise. But I'll just make it a light gray on top to a darker gray when the mouse goes over that box one. So let's refresh the page and when my mouse goes over one you'll see it changes from one gradient to another. See? So you can do that for your buttons and then you have nice rollover buttons that have cool gradients on them. And you can even round those corners by using border radius. So for instance if I was to put here border dash radius let's say eight pixels and then render that. When I hover over it you'll see I have nice corners or rounded edges on my gradient now. And I can just set it like that for the uh, for the non-hover state too. So if I take that border radius and I put it right there and then I render this I'll have a rounded rectangle that has gradient and when I go over it it changes from one gradient style to another. So it's like a button now. So I'm just showing you that's how you can make buttons if you have a tags that you want to be buttons somewhere you can style them up real easily okay here let me take that out and that now the last thing we have to do is make sure that this works in all browsers for instance if I go to file preview and browser Firefox I get nothing so what I'll do here is add all the prefixes for all of the other browsers now and like I said in the future you wouldn't have to really worry about this so I'll separate all of these out. That way I can make more lines in each one. And I'm going to remove this hover state. Okay, so basically for gradient 1 all the way down through gradient 9, we're going to add the prefixes for the other browsers. So I can take that and make this one Mose. And now when I file preview in Firefox, I've got my first box, you see, because I'm targeting the Mozilla browser. And not only for Mozilla, I need this to work in Internet Explorer, so I'll put MS. And I also need it to work in Opera, so I'll put an O. And when all of those prefixes are no longer used, I just want the default standardized linear gradient after all four of those. Now if I file preview this in Internet Explorer, I get the box, that's good. And what you can do here is up top is just have a default like if I wanted it to be default background color gray if none of these gradients appear so you can also put a URL to a repeating background image that would be like a fallback if these gradients don't happen to render in the browser but you'll see I get the gradients and I don't get just a regular background color of 999 but if none of these gradient settings worked in this particular browser you would just get a background of 999 as a fallback or like I said you can set that to have a URL of a repeating image background 
as fallback. So I'll just go through and put all the prefixes in for all these various examples. Okay, so basically this is what you should end up with. And remember, like I said, each gradient that you create can have a fallback at the top. So you just want to make sure you target WebKit, MOS, MS, and O, and then at the very bottom you put the standardized way that it will be used in the future in all browsers. And in a couple of years from now, you won't even need all of those. You'll only need the one that says linear gradient, just like that. For the time being, we have to use the prefixes. Actually, some will work just like that without the prefix in certain browsers. For instance, Chrome. Let's take a look at Box 2. See? Box 2 is still there. Everything still works just fine. And there's no WebKit prefix. And it still works in Chrome. But you don't really want to do that because some of your settings will not work in Chrome unless you have WebKit. So you just want to leave it just like it is like that for the time being. Because some of these more complex settings won't render in Chrome unless you have the WebKit prefix. Okay, so using these examples should allow you to be able to angle your gradients any way you want, put as many colors that you want in them. Oh, and I wanted to show you guys one more thing. Let me target uh, number two, and I'm going to show you something interesting. Let's target gradient two. So I'll just take all the blacks for all of the prefixes and change them to transparent. Now let's render this, and you'll see we get a transparent color as uh, where the black was which is a pretty cool effect that you can layer these backgrounds on top of other elements and you'll be able to see right through these gradients where they are transparent. All of this code will be on the page where the video renders it developed PHP if any of you happen to need to see all the code or copy it for any reason. Okay, so that covers the various programming parameters for creating linear gradient backgrounds for any HTML elements. And in the next video that I'm going to put out directly after this video, we're going to talk about radial gradients, which allows you to create circular or elliptical shaped gradients.